Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'll be demonstrating the use of the 3D models inside of the Clip Studio Paint app. And today's video has been sponsored by Clip Studio Paint. And keep in mind that there's a link in the description box below for a three month trial of the software so you can try it out, see what you think, and I'm sure you'll like it. This software is actually my favorite for comic book art creation. It's got all the powerful features you need uh, as well as the 3D tools that we're going to talk about today. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump in and get started. If we go here, uh, it says bottom icon, looks like a little folder. And this can be a little bit different if you're working on the desktop, um, but it's pretty easy to find. It's the 3D assets. And essentially, all I'm going to do here is click and drag one of the, um, the 3D characters onto the canvas. And as simple as that, uh, we have a 3D model to work with. Now, what's really neat about this, and let me zoom up a little bit more so that you can hopefully see this better. Okay, so what's really great about this is that you can maneuver around the character like this, and you've got the perspective grid uh, with the character all in one kind of unified layer. So if you go over here, you can see that. You've got the 3D object to the left, the perspective ruler to the right. I can toggle that on and off. And look at that. You've got all that perspective data that you can now uh, draw on and uh, even snap to when needed. It's super powerful. And, and so just keep that in mind that you actually have both with this uh, initial layer. And just gonna hold that. I'm gonna take that off show. And you can even delete that if you just want just the character. And remember that you go to this icon right here where it's a little like see-through box with an arrow. And that's how you're gonna manipulate your 3D model within this space. I'm gonna do a two finger pinch and zoom in here a little bit more. The first three icons move the character as well as a perspective all together. Okay, so see this, we can rotate around, just like you can rotate around like this, same thing right here. Okay, the next few actually move the character away from the perspective. You can use a two finger tap for an undo. You've also got your redos and undos right there. And so this is if you're, you know, maybe a flying character, but you still want the background for uh, design elements and you know, drawing in a, a cityscape or whatever it is. So just keep that in mind. For this case, I'm gonna leave the background kind of attached to the character, but I'm just gonna manipulate the character with these first few icons. Uh, the other thing I wanna show you before we get into actually maneuvering the character is you can either go here to this gear, uh, wrench I should say, and you can get into some other settings that pertain to the character. You can also get to that by going right here. So it's the same little icon as you have over here, but it's got a, a small gear next to it. I find this to be a little bit cluttered, but you keep in mind, you can condense these down and you can, you know, you're going to get used to what you need uh, as you need it. But it's, it's a lot quicker to jump in this menu. See, I can adjust the lighting with this one right here. And I'm just going to show you a few of these settings because it's actually so vast. You would really have to delve in here and play for a bit. Uh, ones I do particularly like if I was to rotate the character like this. And then I go into here and I adjust my perspective slider. I can get some real extreme foreshortening going on there, uh, which can be fun to do, right? And it can really dramatize the scene. Uh, so, you know, those are a couple that I really like to use. I also like the quick sliders for uh, the pose for the hands. This is pretty neat. And I think you, you're supposed to select the hand, but maybe not. Let's try it. So you go in here and you can quickly, yeah, I think if the hand's selected, it adjusts just the one hand. But if it's not, it adjusts both. But notice how it's giving us these hand gestures uh, that are kind of presets, right? And then you can obviously go from there and adjust each finger. Uh, this, this model is fully articulatable. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm going to say it is a word. And so, yeah, you could do a lot with that, which is pretty cool. Um, but again, if these features are a little too confusing for you to notice there, you can come over here. You can manipulate... Uh, things like the the size of the model. I think this is actually pretty funny I would lean more towards the skinnier version because I'm gonna pack on the muscle when I draw it But it's there if you need it you can adjust head to body ratios for more anime or cartoon kind of effects The overall height of the body in relationship to the head height So just all sorts of neat little preset features to help you get a little bit closer to the starting point that you're gonna want to be at there's also a manga perspective. I honestly don't quite see the difference there a whole lot. Uh, maybe it's because I'm not as much of a manga artist. I haven't really delved into that as much. Uh, also with the camera, 
that's where that perspective is. Keep in mind that any one of these items that you want to appear over here, you're going to toggle on the visibility, that little eye icon. Uh, so you can really clean this up over here. I'm going to leave it for now because I'm still learning a lot of this. But as I want to clean this up to the main things I'm going to use, I'm going to come over here and toggle off the eye icon for things I don't use. Uh, so be aware of that. You can also bump up the outline of it. That's pretty cool. You can also toggle off the shadows. So for instance, I almost always take off the shadows on the ground unless I'm working on a full scene. And then you can even take off the light source to the figure, which sometimes can be helpful if it's a little too confusing. And then as far as the light source, again, I kind of showed you that, but this is just a really great feature to be able to quickly visualize the light source for your model in any position. So again, I'm not going to get into these in full detail because there's just so much to really cover. Uh, but hopefully that gives you a nice uh, you know, starting point to understanding much of this. Okay, so now I want to get into posing the character. And this part for me can be a little time consuming. Uh, but I'm going to just give you a breakdown into how I go about it. So for instance, uh, lifting the leg, I'm going to select the upper leg. It's now highlighted in uh, kind of that magenta color. And then I have this gizmo that now allows me to, you know, do certain things, rotation, lift, move side to side, right? So if I want this leg higher, I'm going to bring it up like that, and then I'm going to select the lower leg, bring that down. Notice now the gizmo doesn't have uh, kind of a turning. It's because we can't turn at the knee, right? And so what's really cool about this, uh, I like quite a bit, is the fact that you do start learning more about the body and the anatomy uh, as far as where we can uh, rotate or articulate or things like that. So it's pretty neat. I also like how it has different sections for the midsection, which obviously is important, uh, so that you can start putting more twist to your characters and making them look and feel more dynamically posed. Uh, so that's super important. Um, another way to grab this and move it around, I suggest you kind of, you know, almost do this one more in the beginning of posing your character. See that little box right there on the wrist? Well, that's more of like a... Um, uh, a weighted pull. So if I pull the arm up, notice that the rest of the body goes with it. Okay, so you got to be aware of that that you know this can be a great thing to use, but it can also be a bit of a hindrance if you've already taken the time to pose maybe the rest of the body, and then you go to pull this and it pulls it out of place. Now obviously you've got undos and redos, so you're never really stuck. But I just want you to be aware that it might make more sense to start there, and then quickly you know drag out components of the model. Now this one here seems to react a little bit different, uh, but I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure other than it's it's still a bit of a gizmo, uh, but there are, there are a little bit of differences. But I typically go to point by point and position the character uh, where I want. If you miss grab, you're going to move the character like this, or the camera I should say. Not a big deal. Uh, pretty easy to get back to that. And the main thing is this, so as I kind of started, I feel like sometimes this can be a bit time consuming for myself, but it's time well spent because you can save these poses, right? You can get, uh, spend uh, whatever time it takes to get the pose just right, articulate every finger, every angle, whatever you need, whatever you feel most comfortable with. But then as you, uh, you know, you recognize certain poses are good for other poses. So uh, seating poses can be recycled into lots of variations of seating poses and you know you got to remember that it's just as easy as doing this to move the camera angle so somebody standing or leaning against the wall you know you may think well I'm gonna spend all that time just to pose at that one time well not really because then you're gonna move the camera and there's gonna be another time you're gonna want to use a similar shot and so I would really recommend you saving these and, and naming them appropriately and then sharing them uh, with your fellow artists and community you know Send them my way if they're really cool. I'll check them out. Uh, but, you know, so we get this pose going like this. And I, I would typically try to go for something that I know that I'm otherwise going to struggle with uh, when I go to draw my comics. I mean, it's not like every pose is easy for me, you know. So I draw a lot of poses from imagination, but there's still a bunch that uh, I can tend to struggle with. I really want to push... Uh, the range of what I could go for with something like this. So so something that's a little more uh, foreshortened or the camera's in a kind of an odd angle. Uh, I really think this this is where 
uh, something like this would excel. So for me, foreshortening like this, I might avoid a shot like that because of the arm and how, how tough it might be to get that just right. Remember, we can select each point of, of you know the hands and we can adjust that to be an open hand pose. I'm gonna go for a fist right here. I think that looks kinda, kinda strong. I feel like this leg could go even further back. Point this foot down. Maybe this one down a little more as well. And I can get a little more twist in the body, maybe right about there. And maybe even angle the pose. But see how all of this kind of adds to it feeling a bit more dynamic. And then we can couple that with the perspective and see what it looks like to really stretch that out. And that, you know, obviously makes it look a lot more dynamic. And also I feel like the head is just a bit too large. Now I'm, I'm gonna redraw this so I could obviously fix that, but let's see if we can fix that right here. Uh, where is that? You know what, let me just go here. It's easier for me to find. Is that under pose? Figure, okay. So height head, head to body ratio. I'm gonna make that a lot smaller. Cause I just feel like that's more in, in line with the way that I draw characters anyways. And so right about there. So, so this is essentially where I would be and say, you know, okay, this is about where I would take it to start referencing it for one of my drawings. Again, I would save this, name it appropriately. But the other thing I tend to do is I duplicate it here. Toggle off the visibility of the other one. I hold and rasterize. And rasterize is going to make it into an art file, an image-based graphic. Now, I can no longer modify this. You know, Notice now I can't zoom around it. I do have my backup copy for that, but again, this is a rasterized version. The reason why I like to do that is I can now tone back the opacity. So now what I want to show you is that I'm going to just draw over this. And, and, and really, the thing I want to uh, you know, get through to you is that not just drawing over it, but looking through it and drawing through it is really important, uh, and I'll show you why. So now uh, let's let's go ahead and get to drawing. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce one more layer over top. Uh, actually, I think I'll stay, uh, stay back a little bit initially, but what I like to do here, and, and really we all have to play around with this to see you know, what works well for each of us, but what I like to do is a, a little bit of a uh, my own mannequin through this. Uh, so I kind of ignore some of the anatomy. Now it's always there for me if I need it, but I'm going to, I'm going to draw a very stylistic version of my own anatomy, but there, you know, I'm going to take certain cues from it. Like I like the, the hand pose right there. I think I would have did that differently. And, and some things are, I'm going to look at and say, well, I want to do it differently. But, uh, again, it's looking through it and grasping what you need and then discarding what you don't. Uh, if you think it might negatively impact your style, it's just up to you. But uh, So what I'm going to do is just kind of get in the same mannequin that I would use for my own style of drawing, but take cues of the, the perspective, the alignment of certain things. Uh, I would probably make this leg a bit bigger. I'm not sure yet. I guess I'll just simplify it for now. And I think it does make sense to keep it as simple as possible. Again, you're going to have the reference uh, for the anatomy to jump back to. So it's not like you're, you're doing away with that. Um, but for this particular portion of it, I like to keep it a little bit more simple shapes and just kind of see through it like this. But one of the things that I notice is that by using this method, uh, you can really speed things up a lot. I mean, that's, that's the, the biggest thing is if you struggle uh, you know, you're sitting there trying to work on poses all day and get your compositions right. This can be a huge uh, time saver. So again, I'm kind of fighting the urge to want to draw an anatomy and I'm still getting, I'm finding center to some of these forms. And I might change the direction of the head, I'm not sure, but for now I'm just going to get in the Basic head shape, basic center line. I think I'm going to tilt it up a little more. So again, I'm not leaving it uh, exactly the way it is. Pretty close on this one, but there's a lot of times I, I just change it as I go because you know, I'm used to drawing them without something like this anyways. But again, you got to take the, uh, the strengths from it 
And then, you know, the hands are definitely a big bonus because, you know, hands are always a pain. And I like how you can see the little cylinder divides where the uh, segments are for the fingers. I think that's super helpful. It's probably going to have me drawing hands differently in no time. Okay, so just something like that. I don't know what those last two marks were. Right there. So as simple as that, I've got the pose in place. I can now toggle off the visibility to the uh, previous one. And I can now take this and refine it again, and I could stylize it. Now, essentially what I feel like I came up with is somebody that looks a bit younger, like a, you know, a younger uh, superhero character, uh, which isn't a bad thing, but just keep in mind, and notice I even sized down the head uh, as I did that, and it still came out that way based on the, uh, my perception of it. So I can take this down a bit further. Just remember when you scale the head down, the body gets larger by comparison, right? And that's that's a, also that's already a lot closer. So now what I'm going to do is take this back again. I'm actually going to duplicate it one more time because I kind of like that pose. I like the salvage parts of it. And I'm going to draw through it again. Now um, with this one, I want to really push the style uh, the style that I would for the anatomy. So what I feel like I've done here is I've utilized the pose to get this in place really fast for something that, you know, typically might be a pose that I have to draw a few times. But then now I want to implement uh, a bit more of my own style in the way that I would draw uh, characters for comics. So for this, I'm just going to, you know, really look through this. In fact, I'm going to blue line this. Go down to here. Tap here, that creates a blue line or whatever color you want. And so now I'm really looking past it. And this is a helpful technique for any type of uh, art, but in comics, you'll, you'll see a lot of artists talk about this, even as they reference other um, poses from other artists. And that's another way you could do this. You could reference some really iconic poses from artists you admire and use the uh, 3D mannequins um, or models inside of Clip Studio to position them uh, and mimic you know what you're what you're seeing I think that would be a really helpful exercise to get better at uh, acknowledging what poses work well you know there's a reason they're iconic right when you see a certain one and it's like Remind you of that uh, cool superhero or whoever that you know, super villain. I guess it could be anything. Um, but there's there's a reason certain poses work and certain ones don't, and this is a, a helpful way to get used to that. You see, I'm seeing pretty close to the source material, but I'm also throwing a little bit of style, a little bit of shift to the anatomy. Forgive me as I get a little quiet here and try to concentrate. And obviously you can use the two finger rotation, all that good stuff. You still got your undos and redos if you get into a pinch. I am trying to throw the lines a bit more. Like typically I think that I would have sketched longer and sketched more things out uh, so I would play around with variations of that like you know how how many sketch revisions do I do even though I'm using a 3d model um, so there is that but it's uh, I feel like I can just go right to throw in the lines because there's enough information there in front of me to 
you know, to hinge upon. Look, I need to widen the legs. I've, I've, and I have done that with a few of the models. I feel like the legs for me personally are a little too thin. Maybe I just draw my legs too large on my characters. Time for some introspective work there, but I don't think ultimately I want to change too much about what I'm doing all at once. So I think there is, you know, a little bit of uh, back and forth that's going to happen with, you know, introducing a new way of coming up with your figures. Uh, but it's, I can tell you right now, it's, it's feeling like this would be a lot more productive way to uh, get things done, especially if it's just a complex scene. I guess I look at it the same way that I would, when I start to struggle with a scene, I start to look at uh, other, you know, poses, other comics and things like that. I feel like it's the same area in the same way that I would introduce something like this. I know this would have been a tough area for me right here. I always struggle to figure out where to overlap the um, the neighboring parts of the body for foreshortening. And I feel like that was pretty easy in comparison. By comparison to do. Okay, and then lower abs. I don't know if this character would have a belt line, but something like that. And so now the head and hand, let me just kind of look at this. And I feel like that's a that's a pretty good pose. That's about all I would need. I you know I could definitely get in here and segment more of the anatomy. I think I would do some of that with the uh, the shadowing, but that's about where I would put it. Okay, and for the head shape, I feel like this is pretty accurate. And these models work out really well for just positioning a quick uh, head pose and drawing over it. So uh, making it easier for like, um, you know, when you have to draw out that entire Andrew Loomis method, this can uh, really shorten that, that process for you quite considerably. I feel like that line's a little low. Yeah, and I really can't stress enough how important I think this is going to be for hand gestures and pulses. I mean, let's face it, everybody struggles to draw hands. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you are. Hands are not easy. I think it's the one thing we can all agree, agree upon as artists. The hands are tough. And I feel like I, I went a little too thick. With the fingers here but it's easy to fix just thin them out but all that base structure is right there and I can make it look a little more organic with a few more curves around the fat pads of the fingers just like that And so now that I'm just finishing up the line work, I'm going to go ahead and time lapse it and I'm going to zoom in a bit. You're not going to see as much of the interface, but I want you to focus and be able to see how I continue to refine the work uh, more importantly than showing you, you know, every tool. But just keep in mind that it's uh, it's really just the G pen and I'm going through one more time. I've blue lined the actual line work and now I'm going through and adding in line weight, heavier lines and then I'll start to drop in shadows. And so at first I was looking at this like, well, maybe I'll just do the line art version and some shadows. And then I decided to go with the heavier rendering style, mainly because hopefully it'll give you more ideas. So essentially 
you could just go with the line weight style and let color really uh, control the, the end result of the, the artwork. Uh, or if you like heavier rendering styles, you can do that as well. So I just wanted to show you it was an option. Now, also I end up finishing this with um, adding one additional layer of shadows. So you'll see that at the very end, uh, mainly because I pulled up the, the reference model and I realized that there was some good shadows that I could have taken into account. So one of the ways you might look at doing this on your own is having that reference uh, image up you know, uh, you can make a duplicate window inside of Clip Studio, which is pretty cool. And you could have it sitting to the side uh, and really zoom in on each area that you need to. So you could zoom in on the abdominal muscles or, you know, the midsection and look at the way the shadows are and then introduce that into your own work. So again, I didn't do that here, but it's just something to think about. Uh, these tools are just super effective and you really just have to try it within your own style and see you know see what parts really pertain to the way that you might create uh, i know that me personally uh, i still have a lot to learn with them but i can see a lot of effectiveness for the tougher angles that i tend to struggle with and again that's foreshortening you know bringing the arm out towards camera uh, lots of character overlaps this would be highly powerful for that as well you know a lot of times it's it's easy to draw one character but then when you start overlapping the characters it gets really, um, you know, tough to kind of figure out where all those shapes and forms go. Well, with something like this, that becomes uh, extremely easy, minus the setup time, obviously. And so now just laying in some cross hatching, and uh, just keep in mind that with that, it's really just a gradient. So sometimes I'll actually take the time to add in some shadows and some painterly effects, and then I'll convert those to blue line and cross hatch through it. So again, it's kind of the same thing of looking at that 3D model and looking at where the tone, uh, the tonal values are, but then interpreting it in your own style with cross hatching and rendering techniques. And obviously, if you want to learn more about that, I've got plenty of other videos uh, talking about different ways to render, cross hatch, and different ways that I uh, approach this particular part of the subject. But all in all, this has been a fun uh, exercise and I really enjoy the process and you'll be seeing more of this. Uh, so let me show you now how I take and add another layer of shadows to this and what I finally came up with. So now we're inside the desktop version and you can see uh, I've laid them side by side so that you can see, you know, just the staging of the work. So we started there, did our rough sketch, cleaned it up with some uh, basic perimeter lines inked it. There was actually one stage in between here, but it's not that significant. It was basically just the outline of uh, the rendered version. But right here is what I wanted to show you is this is where I normally would have just finished it off right there. And I don't think that looks bad and with color it would probably look fine. But I noticed one thing by studying the model, the arm of my character, the way that I rendered it, wasn't coming out quite the same. The, the, there's obviously a lot more depth and dimension here. Well, why is that? and I started to pay closer attention to the shadows. So I tried to introduce that to the final model and I think it helped. So uh, again, there's just a ton of resource material from paying attention to these models. And if you can incorporate that into your work along with your rendered style, uh, I think you have a lot to learn from it. And uh, I definitely feel like I've learned through this process myself and I'll continue to use them. So let me know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, more on the way very soon. So as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.